Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'll show you how to build your own Internet of Things hub using one of these Pixel.js devices. So the motivation here is pretty simple. I've got lots of little gadgets hanging around that do different things. And instead of having to build a user interface for each one, I'll build a central UI so that I can control everything from one place. The Pixel is a good choice for this, since it has a screen, some buttons we can use for menu navigation, built-in Bluetooth low energy for communicating with nearby devices, and some I.O. pins that we can connect to non-Bluetooth devices, like this LoRa module. The result will be an easy-to-use menu where I can control all kinds of different devices using Bluetooth or LoRa networks. And you could just as easily add a Wi-Fi module to control pretty much anything connected to the internet. So let's get started on the code side of things and create a basic menu system first. First I'll make an object for storing settings. In this case, the only setting will be the backlight for the screen and then add a function to represent the home menu. Go ahead and give it a title. And then the first option will be for settings. When that option is clicked on in the menu, it'll call some function, in this case a function named settings menu. So let's go ahead and define that function, which of course will just be the menu for our settings. I'm creating a menu object, giving it a title, and then setting this backlight variable to be on or off depending on the state of that property on the object defined at the top. This is just so I can create a label for the menu option that reflects the current state of the backlight setting. And this is the menu option that the user will toggle to toggle the backlight. So we'll flip the backlight bit, write that value to the actual LED on the board, and then call the settings menu function again. The purpose of calling this function again is so that the label of the backlight option changes when you change the state. Then we call that pixel method to build the menu. And I'm initializing the backlight to the state of that property so that it always starts with the light off. And then if I call that home function, I should be able to send this code to the pixel. And there's the menu. You see that the options for the buttons are all drawn on the screen for you, and the title is here at the top. So I can click this to go into settings, and now I have this backlight setting. So if I press it, yep, it works, and I can toggle it on and off. But now I can't get out of this menu. Oops. Well, that's a pretty easy fix. I'll just add this option in the settings menu that takes you back to the home menu. Now if I go back to the pixel, go to settings, toggle the backlight, I can exit the menu and return to home. Cool. But the whole purpose of this is to interact with other devices. So let's start by interacting with this Puck.js. To keep it simple, I'll just change the color of the LEDs over Bluetooth. So I'll go back to the code and first create an object to store some state for the Puck. For instance, I want to store the index of the current color, and then an array of the color options. And these will just be pairs of values where the first value is the name of the color, and the second value is a binary representation of the LEDs. So if I set these bits, it will correspond to the right LED for that color. Next I'll create a method called nextColor, which will advance to the next color and send the data over Bluetooth. So it'll need this GATT Bluetooth attribute object, but I'll skip over this part and get back to that here in a minute, because first I want to define some functions for dealing with Bluetooth. The first one will be BLE connect, which will take in a device name prefix and hopefully return one of those Bluetooth attribute objects. It'll also clear the screen and display the text connecting just to give some feedback. To connect, you just request the device by filtering with that prefix. And then grab the attribute object and call its connect method. This whole thing is a promise rather than returning an actual value, by the way. So now I want a function that allows me to send some data to a specific characteristic on these Bluetooth connections. And I'll call that BLE send. It takes that attribute object a service ID, a characteristic ID, and then the data to send. So we'll use those IDs to look up the actual objects. 
and then call write value on the characteristic to send our data. Cool, now we have some functions for dealing with Bluetooth. Let's go ahead and add another option to that home menu. We'll call it PuckJS. And actions are functions, so here's an arrow function that calls our BLE connect function. Remember, connect expects a device prefix, so I'll specify that I'm looking for a PuckJS device. And since it's a promise, I'll have that resolve to a function named PuckMenu. So this action connects to the Puck and then opens this new menu. Now I can define the menu function, which takes in that Bluetooth attribute object. And it's going to be really similar to the settings menu, so I'll steal some of that code. And basically we're going to get a text representation of the current color, create a menu option for changing the color, just like we did with the backlight. But this one will call that next color method to change the color, and then it'll redraw the menu. And instead of just going home for this home button, we'll go ahead and disconnect from the Bluetooth device since it connects every time we open this menu, and then return home. Oh, remember when I said that we'd get back to defining the next color method? Let's do that. First, I'll just increment to the next color index. The modulo operator here is so that it loops around and repeats. Now I can call this BLE send function and pass it the attribute object, the service and characteristic IDs, and the data to send. I have the puck set up to change the LEDs based on the bits from this data for this characteristic. So that should be everything. Now if I send it, oops, looks like it's disconnected. Anyway, now if I send it, Something still isn't right. Well, we've got all kinds of error messages on the side here. Let's see what's up. Right away, I can tell that this next color call should have passed an attribute object because, well, obviously that's how I defined it. But if I go down here, I'm clearly not using my own code correctly. Okay, let's try that again. Yay! We have red, we have green, and we have blue. It's pretty much instantaneous, too. Now that the puck is working, I'll go ahead and add another Bluetooth device. This one is called the Nordic Thingy 52. I haven't had a chance to use these in any videos yet because I just got them last week, but I'll definitely be using these in some upcoming videos. These are really neat devices. But today I'll just be using it similar to the puck and controlling the LED from my hub menu. And it's so similar that I'll basically just copy and paste most of this code. The main things that I'll change are the color definitions, since the thingy has a specific format that it expects. Nordic provides all kinds of documentation for this stuff, so I won't go into too much detail here. It's pretty straightforward. And then the service and characteristic IDs are also different. So I'll just update those. And then after changing a bunch of variable names and adding the menu option, it's all ready. So I can go ahead and connect to the thingy. Oops, looks like I left the LED on red from playing with it before. Oh well, as soon as I change it past the red, it should, yeah, now it's in sync with the menu. Cool, I can control a thingy. Now to make it really interesting, instead of adding another Bluetooth device, I'll add a LoRa device. So to do that, I'll slide one of these Rayax LoRa modules into the headers, and now I just need to add some code to handle it. I've already covered this in a previous video, but basically I just need to import this rylr library. Set pin 9 to high because that's the pin I'm using to power the LoRa module. Then I can set up a serial interface since these modules communicate over UART. And then connect that rylr library to the serial interface. Now if I add a menu option and then define a menu function, give it a title, do the same option label setup as the rest. Oh, actually, I'll need to go back up and create a configuration object for this to store what color we're on. But I've already used a variable named LoRa for the LoRa interface, so I'll just call this configuration object RYLR, which is the abbreviation for these particular Rayax LoRa modules. The name doesn't really matter, though. And the board that we're communicating with over LoRa only has two LEDs, a red one and a green one, so we can drop the blue option. Now, the code to send this is really easy. The LoRa object has a send method, and we just pass the data that we want to send. Actually, I can simplify this a bit. 
Since the labels are exactly the same as the data that we're sending, there's no point in these values being pairs. This can just be an array of strings. Now if I go back down here, do the usual get the current color thing, create the menu option, which changes the color and reloads the menu, don't forget to add a home option, and render the menu. The only thing to do now is to specify the LoRa network that these devices are on. In this case, mine are all on network 13. And if I send it, it works. I can also update the puck and the thingy. So there you go. I've just turned this Pixel.js into a useful little Internet of Things hub. And with a bit of extra code, I can add pretty much any Bluetooth or LoRa device. There's also plenty of extra I.O. pins for adding devices outside of those networks too. And obviously, blinking LEDs is just an example here. These could easily be controlling servos, or watering your plants, or, you know, anything that you can connect to a microcontroller. And you can also display graphs or sensor readings on the Pixel 2 to get feedback from devices instead of just controlling things. Well, if you have any ideas for how I can improve on this project, or any other project you'd like to see, go to the comments and let me know. But until next time, bye!